Good evening and happy Thursday, everyone. Um, welcome back to this week's Lifted Studio Sessions. If we haven't met yet, my name is Anna. I'm from Say What at St. Andrew the Apostle Marion, and I'm also part of CFC Youth for Christ, and I will be your co-host for this evening. So before we dive deep into this session, I think it would be great to begin with an opening prayer. So um, let us calm our minds and our hearts, and let us put ourselves in the presence of our Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Um, Lord, I'd like to thank you so much for this evening. Thank you for the gift of this community and thank you for the gift of this space. As we enter into tonight's session, I pray that you are with us and that you guide us. As we learn more about blogging and reflection, I ask that you open up our hearts. Please help us learn how to love you more through this means of creativity. We ask this in your name, amen. St. John the Apostle, please pray for us. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. So, I don't know about you guys, but for me, spending all this time in lockdown has really got me reflecting and pondering on a bunch of things. And I bet it's definitely got our guests deep into reflection as well. So our guest tonight is a very familiar face to our diocese and is very familiar to the world of blogging and reflection. So let's welcome Raimi. So Raimi, before I hand it over to you, um, I think it'd be great to get to know you a little bit more. Sure. So, um, so Raimi, tell us about yourself. How are you? I am OK. No, I'm good. Uh, thank you for asking, Anna. Uh, so I'm Raimi, I live in Blacktown, and I have pretty much grown up here my whole life. Um, I went to Good Shepherd in Plumpton for primary school. I went to um, St. Clair in Hassel Grove and then St. Mary's in St. Mary's. Um, and my background is in education. I studied that in uni and did a bit of traveling, worked at the Institute for Mission, did some adult faith formation there. And anyway, that's all, you know. Oh, and then I worked at Street University. It's a social work, youth work place. It's a pretty cool thing there. I learned some TikToks and started some basketball teams. Um, but I, I think bottom line about me, I, I really love people and I have a lot of thoughts. <laughs> so that's just a bit about me. Wow, very cool, very cool. Okay, one more question for you. Why does blogging, oh, what does blogging and reflection mean to you? Like, why is it so important to you? Wow, wow, big question there. Um, did not prepare for this, and that's fine. Blogging, no, blogging means a lot to me. So I started blogging, blogging in 2014. Um, that's probably when some of you were born. <laughs> no kidding. Um, and I just wanted a way to get to know myself. I found that a lot of things would slip my mind if I didn't write it down. I found that, you know, there are a lot of experiences that um, I couldn't let go of and I didn't know why. So I had to put it somewhere. So I reflected through blogs and yeah. I learned a lot about myself through them. And it was just such a creative way to, to do that. So, yeah. Wow, that's heaps beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing. Okie dokie. So now that we know you a little bit, uh, feel free to take it away. Thank you, Anna. I want to begin by thanking all of you for being here. I, I feel like I can't see everyone. But um, thank you so much for being here and, and for the time that you're spending to, to get to know and explore what, uh, what blogging reflections is. Uh, before I go any further, I'd like to um, acknowledge the, the, the land that I'm on, which is the Darug Nation and the traditional custodians of this land. And I pay my respects to elders past, present and future. Um, what I'd like to do is, I'd like to know just a show of hands, 
um, I can see all in, in my gallery view now. And if you'd like to go in gallery view, feel free to as well. Um, so you're just gonna be using your hands. Just put your hands up if you are in high school. I saw it, all right. Put your hands up if you are in uni. Oh, I'm in uni. Put your hands up if you are working. Nice. Uh, put your hands up if you are a, a clergy or religious sister. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Sister Sophie. Um, put your hands up if you watched uh, Marvel Endgame. Oh, there's a couple of people that haven't. Fair oh, no, wait. No, I think that was, that was most people. All right. Okay. Now that you, okay, you put your hands down. Thank you, Mary Rose. <laughs> All right, now what I want you to do is with your hands, right? I want you to go into the chat function of Zoom. And we're just going to do a little a little warm up, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna count to five. And what I want you to do is I just want you to type. It doesn't have to be words. So I'll give you an example. Just that five seconds. And I want to see, I, I I doubt I'll be able to see it, but I just want to see who can type the most letters in the chat in five seconds all right this is a warm-up okay because we're about blogging and this is online ready in three two one go one two three four five stop amazing <laughs> can anyone tell me who won because I, I i feel like wow actually kathy i feel like kathy won that's pretty amazing. All right, okay, we'll do it. We'll do it again, but this time I want you to try and write something, a sentence, all right? Anything, anything at all. It could be, I'll give you a hint, maybe some lyrics of a song, um, anything at all. A little bit about yourself, whatever. Okay, ready? Five seconds to type that. Ready in three, two, one, go. One, two, three, four. Five and stop. <laughs> Amazing. That's so good. <laughs> Thank you, Regine, for the his lyrics. Um, I see that um Mary Rose spot her name wrong. <laughs> but yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. All right, so for today, so blogging is is you do this by typing and that's why I wanted to do that typing warm up. Um, so for this for this workshop tonight, you'll need either your phone so you can have your, your you know, your notes app, <laughs> or you can use your laptop and you can use your notes there as well. Um, so yeah, we're going to have some fun tonight. I want I want to affirm you for choosing to come here and I acknowledge that everyone here, all of us are going through lockdown. Um, I didn't even ask actually if anyone is not from Sydney, but I don't think so. Um, but yeah, we're all under lockdown. So this is something that an experience that we all share. So tonight, um, yeah, let's just learn about this creative form of expression. And the way that I'll teach you is actually just one way, one form of blogging. So um, great. Okay, so what we're gonna do is I am gonna share my screen to my PowerPoint. And I will share sound because I always forget to do that. Here we are, blogging reflections. Can you all, can I just get maybe someone to unmute and tell me that they can see this? Yes. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. All right, so um, welcome. These are two blogs that I have contributed to. One is my own. <laughs> I'm not um, promoting myself, but uh, this is where I've been blogging since 2014. And the most recent one I wrote about is me thinking I have plenty of time when really um, we all have the same 24 hours <laughs> as everyone else. Um, on the right, you'll see uh, an Instagram page and I'm one of the um, contributors there to, uh, to the blogs. And the most recent one that I wrote about was a mental health experience that I had where um, I was in my final year of uni and I just broke down. I had this massive panic attack and I had no idea what was going on with my body. And 
and through that blog, I sort of, I sort of shared my journey um, with mental health. So um, that's why this tonight means so much to me. I get to share with you what has helped me express myself and and figure out what's going on in my head. Because you know, as we typed away all those gibberish words and letters in five seconds, that that what I feel like happens in my head and and maybe you can relate to that as well and on the bottom there you'll see soon I hope to be one of the um, bloggers for the pastoral formation team which is which is what I, where I work now for the Diocese of Parramatta with Donnie who's who's here in this workshop so shout out to my colleague and um, yeah maybe we'll post her on Facebook or we'll have her own website who knows but those are just some of the places that I've been able to blog. So what is blogging, right? Here you see blogging. And I wish I could see you right now, but I I would ask um, who has ever heard of blogging before with a V. And that is video and logging put together. You know, you see people speak to the camera and be like, hey guys, I'm at the beach um, and we're about to play some volleyball and they'll, you know, take videos of the whole experience and show, show how much fun they're having and whatnot. But blogging is web and blog put together. So it's your log or your experiences or whatever you would like to, to document on the internet, hence why the typing. So um, some pros and cons, or I should say pros and cautions of blogging. Um, the pros are you don't have to show your face. <laughs> You don't have to dress up, for, unlike blogging. Um, for blogging as well, you express yourself through words and there's less pressure and time to create each blog. So um, yeah, that's pretty cool. And I, I find that for myself, I don't feel judged because it's my blog. <laughs> I'm expressing myself. I don't get marked. I don't um, care about, you know, when I get a distinction or whatnot. It's, it's really me. Um, sharing my thoughts and trying to figure out what's going on in my head. So that's, that's a pro. Some cautions, um, you don't really know how other people will receive what you're writing. So they, how the reader reads, it's their voice. Um, and also it's not as creative visually. You can't add um, different effects or videos. The only real way is through your words and pictures. And also, um, yeah, vlogs are way more popular now, especially with Instagram and TikTok and Snapchat. So um, yeah, it, it, not as many people are on blogs, but I just find that it's a way for me to keep what I've learned through my experiences. Uh, there are different types of blogs. So you might have seen a fashion blog where they um, have photos or, or um, they document, you know, what different people wear, different seasons. Um, there's food blogs which have recipes and ratings and you know where to eat the best places to eat in Blacktown things like that um, travel blogs so they tell you what to do when you go overseas say if you go to I don't know what's it, New Zealand um, what to do when you're in New Zealand that's a travel blog and um, but tonight what we're going to talk about is reflections reflection type blogs Next, I'm gonna show you a video. And it is it's one of my favorite TikToks. I saw it and I could not stop laughing. And it's very relevant to us tonight. So let's see if it'll show up. Here we go. Yesterday, I was walking to my interview. I saw a starving dog on the way with no limbs, teeth, tail, eyes, deprived of food, water, and shelter. Everyone ignored it, but I couldn't. I stopped to feed the dog and missed the interview. When I got home, I got a phone call from the company. They offered me the job. I was puzzled. I came in to meet the CEO the next day. It turns out the CEO was the dog from yesterday. You never know how one decision can change your whole life. I urge all of you today to reflect on your decisions because you never know where they will take you. Thoughts? And there you go. That is blocking in a nutshell. Plot twist. 
as a plot twist. Um, I hope you enjoyed that video. I, I know I did. I thought that was so funny. I did not expect that at all. You know, the dog is the CEO. But pretty much in that video is a, a scaffold of how to write blogs, particularly reflections. I'm going to show you in this next slide. And again, this is one way I have it up here. This is only one way that I would, I'd love to share with you about how to write these sorts of reflections or blogs. And, you know, if you find that you try it and you're like, oh, I, I think I might add my own flavor to this or I might try something else, I highly encourage you to as well. Okay, so one, there's the story. So what happened that struck you? So as you, as you saw from the video previously, um, there was a guy who was walking to his job interview and, you know, he was someone that really struck him as having, I don't know, no limbs, no teeth. I, I forgot what it was really. But there's a, the experiences that you have, whether it's big or small, um, if they stick with you, there must be a reason for it. And just writing it out and, and maybe keep, if you keep asking yourself, why, why does this, why can't I let go of this story or this experience or this conversation? Um, it can come out in your blog and, and see what it means to you. So the first step is the story, what happened that struck you, you type that out. And then the next part of your blog reflection is you type out what, what did it mean to you? What did you learn from it? And it doesn't have to be, you know, this massive revelation um, where you knew exactly where you would be in your life or, or um, it changed you completely or whatnot or a solution to anything. But maybe it's just like a little life lesson or, or, or a, a realization about yourself or about the world or about your friends, your relationships. And then finally, the edit. Does it make sense? Was this even what I was hoping to communicate or write? And then you can add little bits and pieces, um, add your own flavor to it. I know for me, I like to add jokes. So I'll add one joke in there, even if it's super serious, but that's that's how I deal. <laughs> that's how I cope. I cope with humor and, and expressing myself through these blogs. So story, reflection, and then edit. So now what I'd like you to do, I'd like you to have a look at this slide, right? And this is just something that we're going to explore. And I don't know if I can actually see, oh, I can see the chat. Awesome. I don't know if that blocks the, the PowerPoint, but I want you to take a look at this slide and, and see which one stands out to you. What's an experience that you keep thinking about? Is it um, your HSC year or a particular year in your schooling? Um, maybe it was year six or year seven when you finally went into high school. Uh, was it a conversation that you had with someone that you just kept thinking about and you're like, I don't know why. Was it something that you observed? Is it some scenery or a place that you really love? Is it something completely random that might not make any sense to anyone, but it stands out to you? Or is it some changes in, in your life? So what I want you to do is to have a think about that. And if you can in the chat, um, maybe write one key word from the story that you think about when you see some of these prompts. So for me, I'm going to write um, something random that I keep thinking about and I'll share with you um, is, Snakes. <laughs> All right, I see uh, embarrassed, life changes or the pandemic overall, food, food amazing, meaning, pipeline, ooh, uncomfortability, peace, journey to digital, freedom, scary, friendship, travel, hope, so I want you to, to hold on to this story that you have in your head and these keywords are coming out as people keep typing. Um, the keywords that remind them of a story, right? That they just can't let go of and that they're open to, that you're open to explore in this blogging reflections. 
Um, what are we going to do next? We're going to. I'm going to share with you. All right, so my keyword was snakes, right? And it's because the story is, so I've been doing the 30 for 30 with uh, Catholic Youth Parramatta, where you walk outside for 30 days, um, each day, 30 minutes. And near my house, there is a specific part on, the, on my walk that gives me the creeps I've written there. I just, I don't, I look at it and I'm like, there's something wrong there, right? And it reminds me of a time when I went to a park by myself. I, I went with my journal, I wasn't blogging then. No, I actually I was because I was driving. Um, I sat at a park and there was this huge, like there was so much noise. There was a lot of bugs and I was like, something's, something's happening here. And I look in front of me in this path and I see a snake coming after me, like literally slithering towards me and I pick up my stuff and I ran for my life right and when I when I think about that experience when I reflect on it what I learned is I need to listen to my gut I need to listen to myself and my intuition and what I know about people and the world so that's what I'd write about and when I edit it later on I'll add some sort of you know quirky thing like my spidey senses tingle when I walk past a particular path with tall grass. So that, that would be my edits. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna stop sharing. Oh, how do I, how do, I do that? There we go, stop share. And I'm gonna open the floor. So we had some keywords in the chat. Is anyone, anyone willing to share just the story part? Sure. Uh, it's Jason here. Oh, uh, hi, Jason. I don't have a I don't have a webcam on my desktop, so I'd have to like sign in on my phone at the same time. <laughs> oh, good. Thanks, um, Jason. <laughs> yeah, this is um, my like first ever job interview was for like a parish youth minister job. I remember it's like it's really bad, but I it was like my first job interview ever, as well as just for like the parish youth group I'd already been uh, volunteering for for a bit. One of the questions they asked is like three words you used to describe people used to describe you or like, you know, those basic interview questions. And I was like, at this point, it was like trying to make the room, the room seemed really tense because they had a panel. And like one of the first word I said was tall because I just wasn't thinking. <laughs> and then at that point, I was like, all right, this interview in my head, I was like, this interview is basically done. And then like, yeah, I like the rest of it's just a haze, but it's yeah. <laughs> Awesome. Thanks, Jason, for sharing that story. I mean, we can't see you, but if you say you're tall, you probably are. <laughs> Anyone else? One, one more person, maybe to share just the story part. Yeah, I can share. Thanks. So uh, no worries. Um, so a little while ago, I had to have some surgery and I told a friend of mine like the day before, he just said, oh, how are you going? I said, oh, I'm having surgery tomorrow and, you know, and all that stuff. And um, I went to the hospital and I was going to the admissions desk and I said hi to the nurse and I said who I was. And she said, oh, just hang on a second. And she gave me this flower and she said, oh, someone dropped this off for you today. And I checked the, there was this little note and it said, because my friend and I, we both love the nanny. And it said like two, two CC from Niles. And, um, oh. and um, it was my friend, like he had just come to the hospital to drop off this flower for me. And I still think about it all the time because I think like, wow, that kind of that gesture, he went out of his way to do that. And it just really meant a lot. That's beautiful. That's, that's so cute. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. See, these are stories just from two people and it's not even they're not even life stories they're one story from one day in your life and there's what I'm trying to get at is there's so many gems in your life that are worth writing down I wrote an email to the youth leaders in the diocese of Parramatta and I said you know we can't trust our memory to remember these key moments in our life you know and 
we should write these stories down and, and reflect on them so that we know what we can get out of them. So I encourage you to not be afraid to sit with a thought or sit with a story for just five minutes, right? Um, and to keep going deeper because there are some gems there. There was a friend who once told me, don't let the spirit pass you. And what he was getting at is, you know, there's when you feel a stirring in yourself, when something, an experience, uh, whether it's a conversation or an observation or something that's happened to you in your life, when that moves you to think about it, um, there's something in there that is worth exploring and that it can tell you so much about yourself, um, about your character or about your friendships, relationships, anything. And they're so valuable. And, and this, is, this is the invisible that we can make visible through our writings. So what I'm going to do is I am going to put on some music and I'm going to let you sit just for two minutes, just thinking about it. Also coming to that concentration, sort of, you know, trying to let go of what happened during your day, trying to let go of um, what you're worried about or what you're thinking about, just for two minutes, just to sit with it. And then what we're gonna do is for six minutes, you're just gonna write, just gonna free write, write whatever you're thinking about, write out the story, as many details as you can remember, and then to think about it. Like, what is the deeper meaning? What might be the deeper meaning in that story or in that experience? So zero judgment here. No one can see what you're writing. Um, and you're, you're open, you're welcome to share it later, but there's also zero marking. No one is going to grade this at all. And um, what I love is that no one cares about my spelling, my punctuation, my grammar, nobody cares. This is your blog, you can write whatever you want. Okay, so I'm just going to put on some music now and let's just sit with that for, do that. We're just gonna sit with that for two minutes and then six minutes of writing. you just five minutes go for gold write whatever you're thinking about write the story out enjoy the process
have one more minute. Stop sharing. And I'm going to open the floor to anyone who's willing to share. Mindful, fully mindful though, that um, this is a safe place and you're welcome to express yourself. Maybe we'll limit it to maybe one or two minutes per person. Um, but yeah. Just maybe before we do, if I could just have a gauge from your faces or just, you know, hand signs. Nah. How is that writing time for you? Good, good and a little bit good. <laughs> oh, it was too short. Oh, interesting. Okay. Nice. Good feedback. Okay, so if anyone's willing to share. Queen, thank you. Thanks for the um, process, Reims. I found that to be very helpful. And hopefully this also encourages anyone else to share their, their reflection. So I typed it on my phone and hopefully now I can copy paste to Instagram later. <laughs> okay. I've lost my appetite recently. Maybe it's been a few weeks now. I'm not too sure um, on any given day what I want to eat and whatever I do eat, it's just dissatisfying. So I end up going for food I don't normally choose like cereal. No offense to cereal lovers out there. Just this afternoon, I had to ask myself, what do I feel like? And honestly, nothing. In my thinking, I started asking why. Why does this bother me so much? Because it's been weeks. I used to enjoy eating, looking forward to the next bite, you know, all the flavors. I mean, I love Filipino food. Then I had this realization. I think it's the fact that I'm not eating with people. You see, I live alone and in my isolation, I've had to eat all my meals alone for the last three months, just me and my meals. And so it made me think about Jesus and how much of his time was spent with people and it was with food, how much the company added to the flavor of the food. And perhaps that's the reason why Jesus became like bread for us because he knew that food is supposed to be shared with others. It brings us into a community it brings us into communion. And I think that's the ingredient that I'm missing, people. I can't wait for this lockdown to be over so that I can eat with others. Wow. Thank you, thank you, Queen. Thank you for sharing. I really felt that, I really felt that. Thank you for sharing that. Was it cause of my shaky voice? <laughs> Possibly. No, it's, it's <laughs> welcome. It's welcome. So vulnerable. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Anyone else? Sorry, I just realized it's quiet and I'm, I'm okay with silence, but some people aren't. And would anyone else like to share? Oh, yeah, I'm happy to share. So Thanks, uh, this is a throwback from 2019. I can remember in the lifted retreat, there was this guy with a moustache and in the 
nice truckies who I made friends with. And after uh, after the trip to Europe, then we I started hanging out with this friend, going to all the way to Bankstown and to different places. But that friend turned up to turn out to be moody and later on wanted to borrow my stuff and also unhealthy after trying to meet me every time I bump into going to Parramatta to do my shopping, OMG. That, he was so dominating that I couldn't control my life. Well, it has been, it's already two years now. And what shall I do? Should I either get rid of the friendship or just find a new friend? Because it, it was a hard decision. He wanted to be friends with me, close friends, but I'm definitely not close friends. Or because of all that, abuse over the everything making big deals and yeah and yeah very reactive although we're different and what to do i don't know what to do during this pandemic right now it's maybe i should give up because yeah he's fed up with it now thank you mark for sharing your blog and i think for me what what stands out and what I can relate to is, you know, the red flags when there's people in our life that are possibly toxic and that question of what should I do? Very real, very honest, very relatable. Anyone else? Maybe one more. I'm happy to nominate. <laughs> I'm thinking Kate. Um, thank you for the nomination. Um, <laughs> um, I feel like I couldn't narrow it down just to one thing. So that I feel like I was thinking about a lot of things, but um, during this pandemic um, and being away from each other, I've definitely come to realize um, what friendship really is. Um, and I guess like for me, I really love hearing people's stories. Like I just love hearing where people are coming from and their perspective and how they can like become a better person. But, um, one thing I think I've been trying to reflect on is where certain parts of yourself like uh like your personality your um like the hidden parts that you don't really show to other people um your past traumas like where do they really come from and how you how can you actually deal with that and how can you learn to live with that um, um especially because i have a lot of friends who are struggling mentally um because of the pandemic and it's definitely not helping that we aren't physically close with one another and so that brings a sense of like makes everybody kind of like out of touch with reality and um oh I don't know where I'm going with this <laughs> um yeah I guess I've just been reflecting about where all this comes from so I can be myself better for my friends and for me as well. Yeah. Thank you, Kate. Thank you for sharing that. Um, yes, so relatable. And, and our stories that we share, we find that um, we think that um, the way that we express it is definitely unique but the, the human experience is, is one that we're all connected in. So thank you for sharing that. Super real, Anna says in the chat. Um, I'll leave space for one more because I think you all have incredible stories to share, big or small, if anyone would like to. Oh, 
Joy hey. wants to share. Joy. Okay. Yes. Hey. Um, I'm a bit shy, but um, I wrote down something. It's not as long as like my reviews because I'm not a blogger. I'm a vlogger, but. Um, <laughs> Well, thank you for still coming tonight as a vlogger. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> no, can I just share? But what I wrote is in a different language. It's not in English. But I can translate it later on. But I just wrote like a bit. Is that okay? Yeah, that's All cool. Right. Thanks. Nandito tayo sa mga panahon na hindi mo alam kung saan tutungo. Saan? Saan ba dapat tayo pupunta? Saan ba dapat tutungo? May destination ba? Bakit lagi tayong may gustong puntahan? That's it. Thank you. Wow. Okay. I can translate it, actually. Yes, yeah. yes, please. Okay. <laughs> Let us. Here we are in times where we don't know where we're going. Where? Where are we meant to go? Where is our destination? Is there a destination? Why do we need to always want to have a destination? Thanks. That's beautiful. Thank you, Joy. And that's a real question that we ask ourselves. Is there a destination? That was, that was profound, as Anna was saying. Um, thank you all. I, I really wish we could see, hear, read all of your stories. Because um, I just want to let you know if someone hasn't told you before, but you have something very special and very unique to bring to the world and it's through your stories. And blogging is one way to express that. Um, there's, something that there's something in your dignity and in who you are as a person that is so loved already and has has so much to share so i hope you feel encouraged by one another by hearing each other's stories by giving yourself time to write and see that you actually can and it sometimes only takes five minutes so um some some something i'd want to add um some creative ways some creative things that you can add to a blog so what i do is in mine I have my blog like my writing and usually it's a two minute read and that's roughly three to 400 words. Some people who post on Instagram, it's less than 100 words and it can be super profound, just as Joy showed um, us as an example. Um, and yeah, what I do is at the very end of my blog, I call it DVD extras and I just ask myself five questions that might be interesting to someone else. And it's my way of either relating to other people or just sharing some things that I really love. So for example, I'll say the last thing that I ate. Um, I don't even, what was the last thing I ate? I think it was me going. It was noodles. It was two minute noodles. Um, or I'll say, you know, the last, oh, my favorite song right now, which is, I don't even know. It's anyway, so it's these questions that help me to think, <laughs> especially on the spot, because I have so many thoughts. Um, you can put in fun facts about yourself. You can put in a song or you can write about a TV show that um, really struck you or that you really love and you don't know why. Um, it might not just be because there are so many, you know, attractive actors and actresses. It could be something in the story or the friendship that really moves you. Um, you can put in a quote. Um, of someone that you really respect or who, who you really resonate with or an image that could be just from your phone or it can be from um, a website that I use often, which is unsplash.com, which is high quality images that you can pop in your, in your blogs. But yeah, I hope that, that that's the end. I hope you had fun and I hope you um, enjoyed making time writing and listening to yourself because that's what these blogs are and expressing yourself. Thanks. Wow, amazing. Thank you so much, Remy. Can we all give her another round of applause? Maybe a silent round of applause because we can't hear everyone. Wow, very cool. Wow, there was so much to unpack from all of that. Um, I'd like to share something that I got from it. 
And it was a, it was like two quotes. So the first one was, don't let the spirits pass. Ooh, crazy. And another thing that she said was, we should write these stories down and reflect on them to see what we can get out of them. Like, when I heard that, I was like, that's crazy. Because I know that with the busyness of life, like all of that stuff can take us away from deeper reflection. You know, maybe we're bombarded with work. Maybe it's our education, or maybe there's an array of other things that just take up our time. But it's so good to just make the time to just sit with yourself and see with see where you are at. And it's also very good to write things down as well. I don't know about you guys, but I'm super forgetful. Like when I talk, I'm known for going on random tangents and having a lot of mind blanks because I don't remember a lot of my stories quite well. But yeah, if I took the time to sit with myself write things down, reflect and edit, I think I would remember a lot more things. And I think I'll also learn a lot of lessons too, because there's so much to gain from every experience that I have. Like, why let the spirit pass when there are so many places the spirit can take me in these reflections? Ooh, deep. All right. So 